All right. Well, some experts believe COVID-19 super spreaders are the reason for the high number of infections around the world. Some epidemiologists even claim that just 80% of local transmissions can be traced back to 20% of infected people. They say whether you are a super spreader depends on a combination of your pathogens, biology, environment and behavior. Well, let's discuss this with our expert. That's Adrian Purin from the National Institute for Communicable Diseases. Adrian, good morning. And uh, thanks so much once again for your time. So let's talk. Let's first start with the definition of a super spreader. Are we looking at a person? Are we looking at an event? Are we looking at gatherings? Who or what are we talking about? Well, I think we're looking at both. I think we're looking at individuals um, who are thought to um, either they think they, they're dead ends, as it were, but they're also individuals who are the dead ends in the sense that they are infected, but they don't transmit. But you can have individuals who, uh, for reasons that are not always obvious or clear, may have viral, high viral loads, for example, and are able to um, spread the virus more effectively um, than, than others. And that's so we, it's thought that there, will, will, there has been multiple introductions in many countries, Italy, South Africa, mm. multiple introductions of individuals in order for this um, transmission to occur and to expand as, as what we are currently seeing. And then the events are really around events where you, it's not really about the numbers always, but it's above 10 or so when you start having people in close contact, in closed facilities, for example, with poor ventilation, that you can have an increase in the number of, of numbers of people um, infected. So, a so it's a combination. When we talk about, let's talk about the individuals now, when we talk about super spreaders, are we looking at people who might be asymptomatic? Are we looking at people who, because you talk about maybe a high viral load, that they will be very sick? Who are we to, or is it a combination of both? It's probably a combination of both. I think we have, you know, there are events like the asymptomatic individuals who don't really present with any symptoms at all who are spreading the disease, but it's thought that the um, super spreaders are probably individuals who are likely symptomatic and are actually spreading um, disease. So there have been very good examples um, in particular settings in South Korea, the United States, um, where, for example, a choir was practicing. And there was just one individual who presented with symptoms later on. But in that choir practice, about 60 individuals, about 50 out of them became infected. And it's traced back to a single individual that started being infected and then spread um, because they were in close contact for a long period of time. And I think that's also the other critical factor is that is the duration of exposure as well. So might we find some answers there then uh, when we look at uh, the rising number of confirmed cases that we're seeing in Gauteng, when we look at the high numbers that we're seeing in the Western Cape, particularly let's start with Gauteng. Could this be a possibility that we just have uh, a larger number of super spreaders among us that might make us the next new epicenter of this pandemic in Gauteng? Yeah, I think it's a combination of that. I think it's a combination of the fact that we've relaxed um, the uh, restrictions that we had because physical distancing is the key here, obviously, and the numbers and close contact and the duration of contact. So I think as we've relaxed and increased the numbers of people moving about, coming into contact, there may well be events, certainly, as we've already uh, identified, for example, in particular building sites, I noticed, for example, mm. um, malls, shops. Um, are there funerals happening, for example, where there is this combination of being in confined spaces with an individual or individuals who are potentially super spreaders who are actually uh, transmitting disease? But again, I think we just need to be cautious about this because I think stigma is uh, yeah. also a really big concern. Mm. But I mean, these, these are just physiological events. They're, they're not intended. I, I don't think people are intending to spread um, the disease. It's just what what is needed to prevent transmission. And these are the, the conditions for transmission. So being outside, for example, exercise, being in an open space area, that's where the likelihood of transmission is far less than, for example, being in a confined space. Mm. And just looking at the provinces, I mean, Gauteng and Western Cape, generally busy, generally popular, uh, lots going on uh, there as well. Exactly. If we look at e economy as well, uh, Prof. So if we look at Gauteng, um, poised now to become the new epicenter of, uh, of this virus, I mean, what, what makes a province or what makes a certain place an epicenter? Because we know the Western Cape still has high numbers. We know they have a higher death rate than Gauteng. What would uh, make us overtake that or claim that unfortunate title, I suppose? Well, I think it's really a matter of how the, the, di the, the, the dynamics, and I think the dynamics in Gauteng is because I think we had probably a larger increase of, of people moving in back into the province or moving within the province and coming into contact with each other. So I think those are the types of events that will allow for 
um, trans transmission t to occur. And I think we probably will see that um, in other provinces. We've already seen that in the Northwest. We're starting to see that in, in KZN as well. But I think that's where we come back to the, the point about uh, tracing and isolation and quarantining individuals. Um, I think in Cape Town or the, the Cape region, for example, they had very great difficulty in achieving um, the necessary isolation or quarantine of individuals once people have been identified as being infected. So if we experience similar problems in, in the Gauteng region, then certainly we are going to see the explosion, which we already have um, in terms of, of the numbers. But I think it's still key that we emphasize the points that quarantine, isolation, tracing and tracking, these are the key activities that must be continued and, and, and focused on in order for us to try and prevent transmission. Mm -hmm. Because it's really that end point, and that, that end point is death. And looking at high care, ICU, if they are overwhelmed and not being able to manage them, we're going to see what we've seen in Italy and Spain, for example, mm -hmm. and under the particular circumstances. And then so I think it's key your safe bubbles. I, I know people get irritated with me about this, but you need to keep your safe bubble. Yeah, yeah. that's the bubble. The Definitely. Uh, uh, Prof, just, just another quick one. Would the number of infections compared to the number of active cases make all the difference in determining the epicenter there between these two provinces? No, I think, the, the, I think it's, it's really about recoveries, in other words. Oh. Um, so again, we need to emphasize that you, we're going to have a large increase in the numbers, but again, the key here is that there will be recoveries. I think the other key point that you raised that I want to comment on is that, in fact, we should be cautious about some of the numbers now because the, there's a change in the test strategy. So um, I think we may not be seeing the complete picture. So, for example, in the Western Cape, they've changed to primarily testing hospital based cases or facility based cases. The numbers may look lower. But in fact, um, the overall picture may well be different. And that's where, I guess, the serious surveillance studies will show us what the extent is of the actual epidemic. All right. So I guess the lesson for today is stay in your safe bubble and uh, avoid being around possible super spreaders or becoming a super spreader yourself. Prof, have I got that right? Just about. But okay. no stigma. No stigma and no stigma. There's nothing wrong. Um, you know, people have recovered and you go on. It's not a shameful uh, illness to contract at this time. All right. From there.